Hi, welcome back everyone. This is Developer Diary continuing for Alpha Run X and I'm forgetting the date again, the 21st of April 2012. Um, so continuing on from the last video that I just did, uh, presuming that a few of you are actually following these videos, the uh, what we had before is with the character here, the head was disappearing and not, uh, not reappearing. Uh, I've now fixed that problem. Uh, I actually did that when the video was not was not recording, but I'll explain how I did that. I think it was probably a little bit more interesting that I didn't include how to fix that because I would just be sat there, I was sat there for about 10 minutes trying to figure out how to do it and I don't think that would make a very interesting video. But, you know, I guess I guess it's, uh, that's kind of the point of the, not the point of the, the developer video, the developer diary videos to be boring, but, uh, you know, to sort of give you guys a real perspective on how how kind of game development works from a, an indie perspective. So the other thing is the balance seems to be working in terms of the speed, the difficulty, it seems to be working quite well now. Um, I think there's quite a good balance. Um, I'm finding this quite difficult and as you can see it's just getting harder and faster. So I just hit, I just hit a block. So there's a three second or four second window it gives you a bit of a breather where you, there's a moment where you don't, there's no blocks. You can see that just happened again. And down to zero lives. But what's happening here is that I'm able to continue forever. I think I've reached the maximum difficulty level here. And okay, so that's okay. One of the things that I don't generally like to do in games is uh, have it uh, have a state where you can't lose. Um, you know, once you've reached that maximum skill level, you can continue forever. Um, I'm not a big fan of that one at all. I think I think you know there should be an always an, an ever continuing gradual difficulty increase and so that's what we need to do here we, make, we need to make sure that there is a point at which it, it gets so hard that you know you have to increase your skill level in order to get further so this part of the this part of the uh, uh, the code here actually actually changes the spawn rate and the speed rate uh, I showed that one in a previous video as well so what we need to do is probably just adjust adjust some of this speed that should make it really difficult, uh, but we don't want to increase the difficulty too fast, of course. So I think, let's take the max speed of say 30, and um, speed increase amount, let's say 1.1. So this is the, how much the speed will increase each time the speed gets updated. So let's give this a try. And I'll also deploy this to the to my iPod Touch in a moment as well, so you guys can see how that runs and and how that deployment process works as well. And like I've mentioned this before, this isn't a tutorial video. This is simply a developer diary video. Uh, probably other developers would get the most out of this in terms of like you know uh, seeing how I do certain things and then maybe asking questions in the comments and I can answer them. Uh, feel free to use the code as well, everyone. You know, if, if you are a fellow Unity developer or a JavaScript developer, um, you know, feel free to use that. Uh, it's it's totally fine. There's no super secret code in there which which nobody else could achieve. So I don't mind sharing that. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm doing terrible now. Oh, that was terrible, terrible, terrible. Oh my god. But of course, the best way to test this is actually on the device uh, to get a real feel for how um, you know how this game actually plays. But I'd love, to, I'd love to know what people think about this style as well, in terms of the like the sort of minimalistic old Atari arcade sort of almost pong-looking style game. Um, I'm a fan of it. I, I do enjoy these these old style games, which don't focus so much on presentation, but more on gameplay and challenge. Uh, I'm a real big fan of those games. Um, so I'm just curious: does, I, does any, do people like this style? Um, you know, uh, 
originally this was uploaded on Android, a, a different, a, actually a different version was uploaded on Android. And, you know, a lot of people liked it, but a lot of people didn't like it, but not because of the art style, more because the version 1 was just far too difficult. Well, and this is getting hard. Oh, crap. Okay, I think that's, that's actually quite good. I think, uh, oh, crap. Sorry, I'll try not to swear too much on these, <laughs> these videos. I think this is the, I think that's the optimum kind of speed there, you know, that was the maximum that, the time that it takes to jump um, between the blocks. Uh, if you're fast enough, you can just about make it, but it doesn't become impossible. That's, I want to avoid impossible and I want to avoid the, the state where a player cannot, where a player can just go forever because they've reached that skill level and they can just continue forever. We want to want to completely avoid that. Uh, I'm 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 pretty good at these games now just because I'm developing them and I'm actually programming them and testing them all the time. So um, I think if 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 I can't continue, then then most of the players out there maybe can't can't continue past that skill point. So they have to increase their skill level. Uh, but no, there are actually in fact there's a lot of players who are way better than me, especially after a few weeks. Uh, I get uh, a lot of players do send in their scores to me, and I maintain. Uh, I must continue to maintain a scoreboard um, for all of the X series games, so things like Temple Run Training and, and uh, things like Alpha Jetpack X and so on. These games, uh, a lot of sort of hardcore players send in their score, and, and I update them on the game description. But I'm actually going to have a Facebook page, and I'm going to do like a, a fan page, which actually shows all of the games with all of the scores, and then it's in a single location. Because before it was sort of an iPhone and Android game description, but I think having them in one Facebook central place and they can show their friends and share and so on, which also helps to promote the game, of course. So I think I think that was pretty good. Uh, but the point I was making before was let me know what you think of the style, everyone. You know, is it, is it interesting? Is it boring? I'd love to know what everyone thinks about this because uh, uh, you know the feedback is always useful. Oh, the problem before uh, what, we, what was happening before was when the character here was getting hit, the head was disappearing. Um, just so you know, what I had to do was put that head on a separate layer, the animation on a separate layer. So I use this code here. Uh, the name of the head flash animation is called character flash. Uh, the body also is, uh, uses the same animation to make it sort of flash on and off. And that's more, that's like an old school, um, how can you say, uh, I don't know what the word is, but people recognize it. They know that if a character's flashing, that's a moment of invincibility because they just got hit. That's pretty obvious to, to players, especially older gamers. Um, so character flash, what I've done is added, added it on a, on a layer separate because basically the head has two animation layers. One is the head duck and one is the flashing for the head. So what I did is put that on a separate layer so these two animations do not interfere with each other. Um, and that's what the that's what this like animation dot layer does is it keeps them separate. So what was happening before is when I was clicking duck, it was actually stopping the character flash animation. So I don't know precisely how that works exactly, but this is basically how we do it. Just add it on a separate layer so they don't interfere with each other. So that's fixed the problem. So if anyone else has that, hopefully uh, you know if you're working with Unity, that will uh, will help you guys out. Okay, so I think. I think so far we're pretty good. I'm going to deploy this to my iPod Touch in a moment and then I'm going to do a separate video so that you guys can see it actually running on the iPod Touch. I'm just going to see what else needs to be done and also show you as well. So these buttons down here on the uh, on the bottom left of the screen, so these 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 need to also need to be done. Um, this basically, I've already started, but I need to test. This is the in-app purchase button. This is the instant in-app purchase. So if a player taps on that, they can they can uh, remove the ads and unlock the three extra lives um, for 99 cents. I've set this up. Uh, this just turns off the music. Uh, this actually links to a YouTube video, and this one is a rate the game button. Now the ads actually appear will appear along the bottom here. So what I'm going to have to do is move these over slightly and I might be able to squash them sort of together in the bottom left, that might work. So let's give it a try. And I'm just going to check mm -hmm. how long this video has going, been going for. In fact, I'm going to start a second video guys because this, this might be going on for a while. So uh, join me in the next video and I will keep on recording.